Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Kristen, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you some interior design rules you should never break. These are guidelines that you can follow to create the perfect looking space every single time. I'm gonna be sharing with you specific measurements, sizes, and placement rules so that you can create that picture perfect look in your home. So if you enjoy watching and find this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, let's jump right into the size of your coffee table because the size of your coffee table definitely matters. If your coffee table is too low, too high, too large, or too small, it's gonna throw off your entire design. It's really a key piece in your living room and family room, so you definitely wanna get it right. The height of your coffee table should typically line up with the height of your seat cushion on your sofa. That's how you can really tell if you've purchased the right size coffee table. So if you have a low profile sofa that sits low to the ground, you're gonna wanna look for that coordinating height for your coffee table. So that your coffee table is also low. Once you match up these measurements, your space is going to look balanced and perfect Perfect, no matter what coffee table you choose. Another important measurement to consider is the length of your coffee table. You definitely want it to coordinate well with your sofa size. So typically you're looking for a coffee table that's three fifths the size of your sofa. You want it to be just a little bit smaller than your sofa so that it lines up nicely in front of it. It can really be flanked by a larger sofa and it adds that balance into your space. As soon as your coffee table is too small and about half the size of your sofa, it all starts to look off. If you have a coffee table that's currently too small for your space, you can always double up on your coffee table to extend the look of it by just placing two of the same coffee tables side by side. This will give you that long lengthened look. If you have a round coffee table that's too small, small for your sofa, make sure you bring in multiple round end tables to create a layered nested look. This is gonna build upon your existing coffee table, make it look a lot larger, and add a really interesting element to your space. So there's always really fun fixes that you can do for coffee tables that are too small. But if you're on the hunt for a new coffee table, make sure that you're considering the height and the length of that piece so that you can find the right one for your space. Now, when it comes to decorating with an accent color, make sure that you're decorating with more than one shade of that color. Don't just decorate with one color in the same shade across your entire home, because that's gonna feel a little bit primary. You can build upon that and add variation to your existing color palette by bringing in deeper tones, adding in some light shades, so that you can really come up with a complex designer look. This is gonna add layers to your home and make it feel a little bit more interesting and definitely add some depth and detail. You can implement this with paint colors, tile colors, pillows, curtains, rugs, furniture. You can definitely add some variation in multiple ways. Now the key to hanging wall art is making sure that it's hung at the correct height. It's definitely not a guessing game when it comes to wall art. If you hang your wall art too high, it looks very separated from the rest of your space and definitely throws the entire room off. And if it's hung too low, that would be very odd as well. So try to make sure that the middle point of your wall art piece is 57 to 60 inches off of the floor. This is going to be that perfect eyeline level that feels comfortable, that feels integrated with your furniture, and it really hits that midpoint of the wall well. This is based off of human dimensions, so it's really all about that eyeline comfort level so that you can see your space as a whole and your art is included in that. This is easy to do when you're hanging one art piece, but if you're hanging multiple pieces in a gallery wall or grouping, make sure that that midpoint to your grouping is that 57 to 60 inches off of the floor. Then you can build around that and build down and above to fill in that space. Now let's talk paint. There should always be some kind of contrasting element between your walls and your trim. And your trim is your baseboards, your doors, and your window trim. This should always be contrasting in some way, either by color or paint sheen. If you are going with a monochromatic look and you want your trim to be the same color as your walls, make sure that your trim is at least a glossier finish than your walls. So if your walls are eggshell, make sure that your trim is semi-gloss or high gloss. It should always be a more durable sheen like that since you do wanna be able to wash and clean them, but it also brings out the detail in the trim work a lot more. You can also bring out that detail by choosing a contrasting paint color. Typically we see brighter baseboards. So you go with the whitest of white for your baseboards, your doors, and your trim. You can also do it completely opposite and do darker trim 
with lighter walls, but you'll always have some kind of contrast there. So never just paint your walls the same finish and color as your baseboards, your trim, and your doors. That's gonna look very flat and you definitely wanna bring out those beautiful details in your home. So always make sure that your trim is a contrasting color or sheen for the best look in your home. Curtains are one of those design elements that you need in your home. They just instantly soften your space. They make it feel warm and cozy. They add functionality and they just add this finishing touch to your space. But if you want to make your home look as large, grand and finished as possible, you have to make sure that you get that curtain rod hung at the right height. The main rule to remember is hang that curtain rod at least four to six inches above your window frame. Don't line up your curtain rod with your window frame because that's going to shrink the size of your window and shrink the size of your room. Really lengthen your space by bringing that rod up. This is the minimum spacing from your window frame that you should have. You should absolutely add more if you can and really bring that curtain rod all the way up to the ceiling. That will frame your windows nicely, really open up your room and make it feel larger than it really is. Now, another measurement detail to always remember is the correct height for your end tables and nightstands. These are two accent pieces that really have to work off of your main piece. So your end tables in your living room should coordinate well with your sofa and your accent chairs. They should be one to two inches lower than your armrest. That's how you know that it's the right size for your space. If your end table is really low, it's going to throw your entire design like this. You're gonna be reaching more than you need to and it won't look right beside your furniture pieces. If your end table is taller than your armrest, it's going to create a very odd look in your space and your end table is gonna look way too large for your space. Keep about one to two inches away from your armrest for the most natural look. Now for your nightstands in your bedroom, they should always be lined up with the height of the top of your mattress. That's when you have that balanced classic look. If they go any lower than that, again, it feels very off, they'll feel way too small for the bed. And if they go taller than that, it doesn't create a nice reaching height and definitely throws off the design as well. The size of your nightstands definitely makes a huge impact to the entire look of your design. So it's also very important to make sure that you get the width measurements right. If you have a double bed, make sure that you're getting a nightstand that's between 17 and 20 inches wide. If you go any smaller than that, it's gonna look a little small and dinky in your space. If you have a queen size bed, make sure that you're getting a nightstand that's between 21 and 30 inches wide. And if you have a king size bed, make sure that you're getting getting a larger nightstand that's 31 inches or more. This is going to create a balanced look in your space, fill out your entire wall and create the perfect base for your bedroom design. Another design element that I think every bedroom needs is a good rug. It really helps anchor your entire bedroom setup and bring it together. So make sure that you're getting the right rug size because this will absolutely make or break your design as well. Make sure that your rug extends at least 12 to 18 inches off of your bed on either side and off of the footboard. So when you're thinking rug sizes, if you're using a double bed, make sure that you have at least a six by nine rug or larger. If you have a queen size bed, make sure that you're using at least an eight by 10 rug or larger. And if you have a king size bed, make sure that you're going up to the nine by 12 or 10 by 14. So if your rug right now is too small for your bedroom, you can always layer into it to create a larger look. So layering in a larger rug underneath that's maybe a jute or a natural fiber, something that's a little bit contrasting to your existing rug would definitely add that designer look and expand the look of your existing piece. Always add in multiple light sources so that you can really create a designer look. If you have ambient lighting on your ceiling, add in accent lighting with lamps, with sconces, anything that's really gonna soften the look of your home. You can also add in task lighting like reading lamps and focused lights for your desk to really create a functional space as well. If you currently just have ambient lighting in your home, all of your ceiling lights, make sure that you add that second element of accent lighting. These could be table lamps, floor lamps, wall sconces. These are gonna really soften the look of your home and make them feel cozy, welcoming, and warm. You can then add your your third lighting element, which is task lighting. This is gonna be that focused light that really helps you perform tasks. So that could be a reading light, that could be lighting underneath your countertops, that could be your piano light, your desk light. These are all functional pieces that aren't there for the total ambiance, but they're definitely there to create more functionality in your space. So as a whole, all three elements will create a very complete lighting design. 
All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. You can save this video for future use as your interior design cheat sheet that you can look back on when you're designing, planning, or picking any furniture for your space. If you enjoyed watching and found this video helpful, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that like button. And make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss the upcoming videos. Next up is our fully furnished house tour. So I can't wait to show you guys all around our lake house. Click that red subscribe button down below and make sure you guys have my notifications turned all the way on so you're first to see the next video. Love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.